Hi everyone, hello from New York City. We are still sheltering in place. Two million of you guys watched my video for how to sew a face mask, and a lot of you asked for different variations. So today I'd like to show you three. How to sew a face mask for a kid, how to sew a face mask with a pocket for a filter, and how to sew a face mask with double thickness so that you can get some extra protection. I'm going to put the original tutorial at the end of this video, so if you're interested in watching that, scroll to this time code here, and let's get started. So the first thing we're going to do is make a face mask for a little kid. If you have a teenager, I'd probably stick with the original tutorial. And if your kids are super little like Charlotte, they might not actually be good in the masks at all. But for everyone else, here's what you do. So I'm starting out with two four inch by seven inch rectangles of fabric. If your kid is a little bit older and has a little bit bigger of a face, you might want to try five inches by eight inches. Other than the change in fabric size, the rest of the tutorial is completely the same. Put one piece of fabric right side up on a flat surface, put a tie in each corner with the strings facing towards the center instead of off towards the side. These are about 10 inches long. Top that with a second piece of fabric right side down and pin everything in place. I like to mark where I'm going to leave the gap so I can turn everything inside out when I'm done. So completely around the rectangle except for that gap, making sure to forward and back stitch at the end so that nothing unravels. Take that off, turn it right side out, and then fold up two pleats. You want them to overlap about an eighth to a quarter of an inch. Pin those in place and then go back and sew around the entire rectangle again. And that's it. That's the entire kid face mask. It's the exact same process, just a little bit smaller. I asked Charlotte if she wanted to try on the little kid mask, and it lasted about 10 seconds. Okay, I'll get you out. Hold on. <laughs> the next thing we're going to do is make a face mask with a pocket for a filter. This one again is pretty much the same, just with one extra step. You're going to start with your two six inch by nine inch rectangles. And on one of the short sides, you're going to go and fold over the edge of the fabric just a little tiny bit, like a quarter of an inch. Pin or clip that in place and just do one long stitch along that so it's a clean edge. This is where you're going to be able to take your filter in and out. Put a tie in each of the four corners with the strings going towards the center. And I like to do 10 inches to 12 inches for each one. It kind of depends on how big your head is. Put another piece of fabric on top of that, right side down. Make sure that it's your two finished edges that are sandwiched on top of each other. Here's where things get a little bit different. Instead of leaving the gap along the bottom of the mask, we're going to leave our gap along the short edge that you just finished. So when you sew, sew the long edge, the unfinished short edge, the long edge again, and then don't sew where you did those two finished edges. That's where your mask filter is gonna go in. Okay, take that off, turn everything right side out. Now we're going to fold up the pleats like we do with any other mask, but when we sew the pleats, we're just not going to sew the edge that the filter is gonna go in. I like to overlap them by about a quarter of an inch, and then go to the sewing machine and sew around the three sides of the rectangle, just not the side where you have that finished edge. Open up that pocket you made and grab just the top layer of fabric. I like to use a needle and thread and just hand stitch that pleat into place. This is optional, but I do feel like it helps keep the structure of your mask intact. Some people use professional filters. Other people said they're using coffee filters. Whatever you're using, that's great. Just make sure you take it out before you throw the cloth mask in the washing machine. And the last variation we're going to do is a double thickness mask. This has four pieces of cotton. So start with one piece of fabric on your flat surface, top that with a second piece of fabric right side up, and now put your four ties in the corner with everything going towards the center instead of off towards the sides. Top that with another piece of fabric right side down and then top that with another piece of fabric right side down and pin everything in place. Go to the sewing machine, sew around the entire rectangle leaving a gap so you can turn it right side out. And for this double thickness one, you definitely want to make sure you trim your corners just because there's so much fabric and you want it to be neat. So snip off those corners making sure not to cut any of your threads and then turn everything right side out. Sewing the pleats on this is a little bit trickier just because it's so thick, but your regular machine should be able to handle it. So fold up your two pleats overlapping about a quarter of an inch. Like I said, you might just want to go slow on the pleats because it's really thick and you might want to use your hands to help it through the machine. And that's it. That's your double thickness face mask. So the first thing we're going to do is make these ties. This is a really easy trick. Just find an old pair of leggings. I have these old bike shorts that don't fit Charlotte anymore. And cut them into one inch strips. 
This sort of stretchy jersey fabric will roll if you pull on it. So just give each one a really good tug and watch it just completely coil into like the perfect stretchy soft elastic cord. Next you can pick the material that you're going to make your mask out of. If you're a crafter like me, you probably have lots of different scraps of fabric. I've also made masks using upcycled clothing. I made a mask using this flannel from my husband and it's really soft and actually pretty cute. Once you decide what you're going to use, cut out two six inch by nine inch rectangles and set aside four of those ties that you made. Put one of the rectangles right side up on a flat surface and put one of those ties in each of the corners. You want the ties in towards the middle instead of being out because we're going to sew around this and turn it inside out and that's how it's going to work. I like to make sure they're all bunched in the middle, that way I know that the perimeter of the rectangle is clear and then I'm not going to sew over any of those ties. Put your second piece of fabric right side down on top of that. I like to clip the sides first to make sure everything's in place and then go ahead and re-clip the corners to make sure that all three of those layers are in place. I also like to mark a little bit of a gap so I know exactly where I need to not sew so I can turn this inside out. And then I'm gonna start right there at the bottom of the gap and sew around this completely. I'm doing this on my sewing machine. I guess you could do this by hand, it would just take you a little bit longer. Sew around the entire thing, leaving that gap. Backstitch at the front and back so everything is really secure. And then take that off and turn it right side out. I'm going to put this on my little ironing board to make sure it's smooth. Once you've turned everything right side out, find the hole and just iron in those edges so that you know that you can sew over them later. And then you're just going to fold two pleats, which basically just means folding up the bottom and clipping it and folding it up one more time to make three little rows. That's gonna let the mask sort of expand over your nose and your chin without just being a flat piece of fabric. So fold those up. It might take you a couple tries to get them even, but that's okay, just reclip them if you need. I'm gonna bring this back to the sewing machine and just sew around the entire rectangle again and then we're done. Here is our finished product. It expands like this to cover your nose and your chin. I like these because they're machine washable. Whenever I get home, I just throw them right into the wash so that I know that they're clean. Thank you all so much for watching. Do what you feel most comfortable with and hopefully this is helpful. See you soon, bye.